we will look at the most interesting scarabs and potential combinations. Spoiler and flashbang warning, these are my notes. For the uniques, we have the Reliquary Scarab of Vision. Area contains the Nameless Seer. Maybe you can scale it like when you have 100% increased map modifiers. Maybe you gain two Seers. For example, in the past, you could roll Ritual Altars and you gain four and then you have a 25% increased modifier and then you would gain up to five. And I could imagine something like this working too, but it has very low odds in my opinion that it actually happens. For the sulfide, about the fumes, the 500% increased item quantity, I had an idea about reverse knockback, maybe spending like 4 minutes gathering all the mobs, but I did read that it was not affecting any mobs that are not in the area at the start, so that's a waste of theory. For the divination scarab, curation and completion are super strong and some of the most valuable probably for the whole league. I think Snap also had a video about this, which maps are mathematically the highest return on investment. I will link to his video in the top right corner. You could gain up to 20 tormented spirits. I'm not sure about the unusual variants. Maybe there are some loot conversion ones in there. That if you get a really rare one, then you get like a fishing rod. Anarchy, you could run like three of those, then you have 12 additional rogue exiles. You can run two of those, then you have eight rogue exiles additionally. Do whatever you get on the map at 50% more. So again 12, and for the 12 you gain 3.6 of those will become giants and probably loot piñatas. Ritual ones are kinda good, but not OP. But the Ritual Scarab of Recognition is interesting. If you run this mod, then you should first rush to the boss, or clear the map, do the boss, and then start doing all of your other rituals, which is usually the recommended way anyway, because then you get more juice. And it probably also pairs good with other mechanics that grant unique monsters, like strong boxes or rogue exiles. How a scarab of cornucopia? If area contains the sacred grove, it will contain up to one additional tier 4 seed for each type if possible. So if you have three different fields, you gain three additional sacred blossoms, unless you can modify this even more. Could mean that the sacred blossoms that drop from t 4 seeds become way cheaper, or this one is expensive. Bestiary scarab of the herd gives you, with a limit of two, ten additional red beasts, which is super strong. The Beast Scarab of Duplication, if you run in a group, this one is probably kind of worth it. If this works together with the Atlas Memory, which grants you a Vivid, Primal and Wild Harvest Beast, then that's amazing and probably best use case. And using it in a six-man party could be interesting. But the best Cherry Scarab of the Shadowed Crow, you gain the Black Morrigan from Affliction League, you get Blue Juice from it, Maybe that affects all of the other beasts or monsters in the map with blue juice, I'm not sure. Or it drops some uniques that usually came from the Affliction League in the Wildwood. The Influencing Scarab of Conversion. Mark said something like this is really rare and the chance could be way too high. You gain a lot of the modified maps from this. I'm looking forward to it. With this Scarab you can gain 12 additional Harbinger and with the specific node like First wave with a 25% chance to replace a uh, Harbinger with a powerful Harbinger boss. Then you would gain another three Harbi bosses. This one is interesting, the Scarab of Discernment. Mark also said whichever fragment they choose is the only one that drops. It's like a Divine Shrine. Once you have it, everything will be flooded in Divines, but it's super rare that you get a good mod. The good mods would be uh, most of all Fracturing Shards and Mirror Shards. And if you have the Atlas for it with Unspeakable Offensive, the last line currency shards dropped by Harbinger in your maps can drop as currency items instead. And that can also be paired with Scarab of Warhearts, which currency shards dropped by Harbingers in area are duplicated. Or you just run one of those. Or if you want to farm more powerful Harbingers, you could run with four regular ones, which gives you 12 Harbingers. And three of those would be bosses. And if you run three regular scarabs, so you get nine additional harbingers, and then 75 of those are powerful harbinger bosses. So you would gain like 6.75. If you run it without the node, you gain 4.5 additional bosses compared to three. And if you run it with the node, then you would gain 6.75 on average. So you go from three to four to seven, if you run generously. You could gain up to 150% increased monsters from Abyss. The Abyss's circuit, could be interesting but probably not worth much and the uh, scarab of edificy is probably not interesting anymore because the spires got fixed so the plus two projectiles don't apply to them anymore essence is kind of sad 
that some of the mods aren't on the base tree anymore. Like this one was in the base tree before, where the corrupting upgrades or transforms the essence and the essence found an area tier higher. Those were on the atlas before, but got removed. But overall it's still very juicy, especially the essence scarab of calcification, which imprisons all of the monsters and turns them into essences. You could gain eight shrines, unusual shrines, not sure about this one, probably divine shrine, which makes you damage immune. Then domination scarab of teachings. I'm not sure if you have any shrine effect on you, you gain 30% increased experience for each shrine. Because if you have for each shrine, then syncretism would be really strong. Like shrines in your maps grant a random additional shrine effect. So you gain 60% increased experience for each shrine you click. Gull effect also applies, which gives you minor shrines. Domination Scarab of Terrors is really interesting for a bunch of other strategies, I think, because it gives you an additional map boss. And the most important part, modifiers to the final map boss also apply to these guardians. Effects like this, map bosses have increased chance to drop conqueror maps. Final map boss has a chance to drop elder or shaper guardian map. Present chance to gain a synth map or exploration. There are fewer than 50 monsters remaining in your maps. Final map bosses are empowered by wildwood wisps, which give them quantity and rarity and make them more difficult. Additional pack of incursion monsters, really juicy and really good if you have some explosions that can proliferate. Incursion scarab of champions. With two of them, you gain 70% chance for all of your monsters to be at least magic, together with the passive time dilation. Incursions in your maps have 33% chance for all monsters to be at least magic. Therefore, you gain 102% magic pack size. Then max it, because usually you gain four temples. You gain four incursions per map, and you need 12 incursions to finish one temple layout. You run your first map, four maps, and then you hope that you actually get a good layout where you gain the Corrupting Lotus or the Orionis Institute, the base version at least, and enough connections. Then you run your second map, then you gain to eight, and then you run a third map and you gain 12. And my strategy would be I'm running four maps, trying to make a really good layout with as many good rooms as possible. And then I would unspec the artifact of the wall, which grants your maps with incursions always have four incursions. Then I would drop down to three and then I would run four maps, another four maps and fixing the layout if possible. But I'm also adding the incursion scarab of timeliness into my second map, then I'm gaining eight tries out of the 12. Then I would unspec the artifacts of the wall, put in the scarab again for the third map, and then finishing the fourth map with either one or two incursions, depending on when I unspec the artifacts of the wall, either in the third or the second map. And then I'm doing the fourth map with either one or two incursions, and that way I gain one additional final architect who will drop an itemized temple. And that's how you make the maximum profit out of this scarab. But you need to unspec one point at least for every four maps you do. But temples are usually one divine to three divines, depending on the layout. But the cost would be three scarabs, one unmaking orb for potentially three to six divines return on investment every four maps. But you probably don't get the Dorianus Institute and the Locus of Corruption every time. And if you get the layout, you also need to roll a tier 3 room for it to be worth anything. Otherwise, it's like a 20 to 40c temple or even less. The two divines would be the best case scenario usually. Betrayal ones didn't impress me too much. 150% increased intelligence for the syndicate mobs you find in the map or reinforcements with 50% chance to be accompanied by reinforcements which gives you more choose and average and betrayal scarab of perpetuation one idea i had is maybe it's really in perpetuity where you gain an additional betrayal scarab each time you interact with the mobs and then maybe you could sustain this one but that's really unlikely what is more likely is that some of the different syndicate members grant you a specific kind of scarab if you defeat them with two scarabs of perpetuation maybe you can guarantee it that each of the syndicate members drops their specific scarab and that way you can make a lot of profit for blight the scarab of bounty you gain a 40 percent chance that you can reopen your blight chests maybe you can open some of the chests more than two times 
that way. And also Blight Oils Fountain Area are one tier higher. It's also really nice. And Blight Scarab of Blooming, which grants Blight Encounters in Area have up to three additional unique bosses to make it more difficult. Unique enemies in Blight Encounters have 100% increased life, which makes it even more difficult. And tier 14 plus Blighted maps found in Area drop as Blight Ravaged maps instead. Usually you need to run the Blight maps and then you can drop the Blight Ravaged maps. And this Scarab mitigates this process that you actually need to run the regular blighted maps. I could imagine this one being actually pretty really cheap and if you have a strong build you can make a lot of money with it. You can gain up to 8 additional reaches with Scarabs. Scarab of the Dreamer, having Chayula guarantee is kinda nice. I think the Lordship is really nice. Breaches in area each contain a Breach Lord because the Breach Lord counts as a unique and that enables some of the other combinations. One thing would be like the significant troves. Unique monsters in your maps have 200% increased chance to drop Scarabs. And maybe that works with Ritual Scarab of Recognition as well, but it probably doesn't spawn on each following Ritual Altar in just one if you open the Breach and then start the encounter and kill the Breach Lot within the time that it's up and within the Ritual. And Breach Scarab of Snares. Breaches in area have 5 to 10 additional class pans, and class pans in area are guarded by a rare Breach monster, which works with other strategies that want you to boost the amount of rares you have. This one could maybe also scale with your map modifiers. You don't gain 10 additional class pans but 20. And the rare mobs probably also count to rare monsters in your maps have 50% increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them. Then cartography next. You can gain up to 100% increased maps found in area. Maps found in area are tier higher up to tier 16, which also affects the amount of T70s you can drop because the base chance is higher or something like that Mark mentioned. A unique map will drop from the final map boss. This one is probably worth something at the start when we still want our atlas completions and maybe you want to combine it with other strategies like Domination Scarab of Terrors, which shrines in area are guarded by an additional map boss. And then you can gain like 8 additional unique maps from the Scarab or you combine it with the Horn Scarab of Pandemonium because it also has the mod modifiers to the final map boss also apply to these atlas bosses. Scarab of Corruption and non-unique maps found in area are corrupted with 8 modifiers. Always really really nice, probably very expensive and you want to choose everything to make as many maps drop as possible. You could gain up to 20 additional strong boxes. This one was a passive before and now it's a Scarab. Bit sad. 75% increased effect of explicit modifiers on strong boxes in area. I'm not sure how strong the explicit modifiers are to affect the loot that we get from the boxes but maybe that's nice this one is the enraged strong boxes but without the enrage probably without the quantity and scarab of discernment the scarab probably gives you more divine strong boxes and arcana strong boxes expedition you can gain triple the amount of runic monsters which is really nice increased explosive radius and number of explosions could be okay or helpful if you have a difficult map layout that doesn't allow you to take all of the good ones that you want. The Scarab would allow you more freedom of choice because with Danic you can exchange to whatever tokens you want to have. An Expedition Scarab of Archaeology. Remnants and Expedition Encounters in area have two additional suffixes and prefixes. That's a lot. Next map's really really difficult. I think that's one of the highest difficult Scarabs. You need a good build that probably has multiple damage types because the mods immune to X, Y or C damage is really common in my opinion and it could break a expedition encounter really fast and it will have insane damage. You can gain 4 additional legions, legion factions in area have 5 additional surgeons. Either it's like you get 5 in total and 2 are on this side and 3 on the other side or my first thought was that you gain 5 additional surgeons per side and you will gain like 10. Command, usually people want no generals because they drop bad loot and are annoying. Scarab of the Sakima gives you a Marrakath faction, which is one of the more valuable kinds. And Scarab of Eternal Conflict is one of the giga choosed Scarabs. Legion monsters in area can be broken out of stasis multiple times if you have a headhunter build or something that clears really, really well. Like Tornado did priorly, then you can break them out a few times. Not sure if it works together with passives like Timer's Conflict. Legion counts near maps have no timer. Breaking out monsters of chests that are in stasis progressively causes a chism. Legion encounters in your maps begin once the chism has occurred. So either that makes it really OP or it breaks the scarab. I'm not sure about that yet. 
or beyond, you could gain 60% additional increased merging radius. You get these small nodes and these, which grant you a total of 44% increased merging radius. Together with the 60 here, you get above 100% increased merging radius, beyond scope of resurgence, the bosses enrage, and you gain double the amount of tainted currency. And you have a higher likelihood of spawning a beyond boss. It's just for farming the tainted currencies at the start. That's probably very valuable when the tainted fusings are still really expensive compared to the vines or whatever. But in the end game, I don't think that's a high profit strategy to farm. Beyond Scarab of Corruption, items dropped by Beyond Demons in area are corrupted. In the past, I'd say that's really good. But now with the corrupted items dropping potentially unaided, that's a bit annoying and probably not worth it to run this one. And Beyond Scarab of the Invasion, unique monsters slain in area create 8 to 12 additional Beyond Portals. That together with Breach Lords or Rogue Exiles could be really, really, really juicy. For Ultimatum, Monsters Grand. 300% increased experience and rewards as though you completed four additional rounds, which could make the encounter really rippy very fast. Ultimatum Scarab of Dueling, ultimatum encounters in area will always lead to a unique boss if possible. I'm not sure what the wording means with the lead to a unique boss instead of the trial master lead to an encounter to the trial master or something like that so maybe there are different bosses new bosses or he has different versions and they count as a unique boss ultimatum encounters in area will offer catalysts as rewards and pairing that with scarab of inscription encounter rewards in area offering catalysts will often inscribed ultimatums instead but usually the inscribed ultimatums are not worth that much and they have decently high risk and inscribed ultimatums are basically the original version of the current older maps for delirium scarab of mania reward me the first 200% faster in area, 100% faster was in the past already, really nice, you gain like 11 rewards or some people get way more. And with this you gain like not double but triple the amount of meters, which could be really juicy if you build a strong. Scarab of Paranoia gains 4 additional reward types together with the Mania. And Delirium Encounters in area contain all unique Delirium bosses, can only be used with tier 11 maps. So you gain Kosis and Omniphobia together with Delusions of Persecution and the Atlas passive tree. Delirium bosses in your maps drop 50% increased simulacrum sprinters and Delirium bosses in your maps have 50% increased chance to drop unique cluster jewels. Maps found in area have layers of Delirium which means that the maps that drop have like Delirium 40, 60, 80 or even 100% Delirium. It saves you a bunch of Delirium orbs. Then for the misc, increased pack size, scarab of adversaries with 8 additional packs with mirrored rare monsters, mysterious scarab with like up to 180 additional cluster of, of mysterious barrels. Kinda looking forward to that. I usually am a barrel enjoyer. Haunted Raiders, really nice, helpful in endgame choosing. Scarab of stability, 50% chance to not be consumed. Scarab of stability, portals to area have a 50% chance to not be consumed on use, which is really good if you run really rippy content at the start, like the 17 maps and you don't want to lose it, or if you're on solo cell phone and can't guarantee a quick replacement for a map, then the horn versions of monster packs in area are at least magic and 40% increased magic pack size. Snap OW predicted that this will be one of the most expensive scarabs in the whole league because of the magic point juice on scarab of nemesis. Rare monsters in area have two additional modifiers. This one is really juicy for everybody that chooses the maps and also for amplified artifacts because the rare monster drop more scarabs that way. But I don't think a horn scarab will be cheap enough for a simple scarab farming atlas. It has to be combined with other stuff. Horn scarab of preservation, basically the price of the three most expensive scarabs together, but still cheaper than the scarab of bloodlines. Because if you use this, you save a bunch of money, but you lose one potential Scarab that you could use to juice your maps even more. Scarab of Awakening, where you can select one imbued crafting option from the map device. I didn't see anything that was super juicy for me. Could be good, but you probably only run it if you need it for one of the 40 challenges, I assume. Our rare monsters in area have at least one reward modifier, and player modifiers to item rarity and item quantity do not apply in the area. So it's anti-magic find, but you gain some nice rewards, probably like the reward tiles on Rogue Exiles from Rukus or the Legion Encounters. Scarab of Glittering, 
gain item rarity and quantity up to 210% respectively. Depending on how fast you kill, it has to recently in it, so it's for 4 seconds. So if you gain 2% rarity and 1% quant per kill, then you need 100 kills within 4 seconds. So you have to kill like 25 mobs per second, gain the maximum amount of juice, and one scarab of pandemonium. Monster packs in every have 50% chance to be replaced by a random atlas boss, and modifiers to the final map boss also apply to these atlas bosses. It's really good if you have an end game strategy. As prior mentioned, the focus is on the synthesis, guardian, and conqueror maps. Some potential combinations are the shrines for boss farming, where you kill mainly the bosses in T14 plus maps, to drop more guardian, conqueror, and synthesis maps, and invasion, rukus, together with anarchy or blight, and maybe even roll boxes to gain more unique monsters, and that way you can profit from the 8 to 12 additional beyond portals and gain a lot of XP and loot from the beyond monsters that spawn. 